This program is made possible by American Senior Benefits Wichita is all about your peace of mind. We specialize in asset protecting, safeguarding your health, planning your estate, and preserving your freedom of choice. We're here to work through all of this with you. American Senior Benefits Wichita proudly supports PBS Kansas. The Candle Club, a place where friends, food, and music come together. Currently, we offer live entertainment every night except Sundays. Enjoy our delicious specialty appetizers and the Candle Club Signature Prime Rib. More about upcoming events at CandleClubWichita.com. Home Health and Hospice of Kansas is a locally owned and community-based provider. We offer quality health care to our patients and families complete with love, warmth, and compassion. We'll take care of all of the details for you. More information at KansasHomeHealth.com. Welcome to Cedric Plaza Retirement Community. Our living options are designed to suit your specific needs and activities that you're sure to love. We believe you'll be able to see yourself here enjoying time with friends and family. For more information, CedricPlaza.org. Welcome to Empowering Seniors. I'm your host, Katherine Ambrose. Today we're talking about reverse mortgages, and I'm with Justin Rochelieu with JR Mortgage. Justin, welcome to the show. Thanks, Katherine. I know that you are a local expert uh, here in Kansas on reverse mortgages. We find that there's a lot of interest and intrigue and also sometimes trepidation and pushback when it comes to talking about reverse mortgages. So it's such a hot topic, we thought it'd be good to cover on the show. Absolutely. It is one of the most underutilized financial products in the United States and definitely something that we need a lot of education on and uh, I'd love to chat about it. So why do you believe it's an underutilized product? So it, this really goes back to the early 2000s when, when this program was very um, misutilized by a lot of uh, mortgage brokers and mortgage lenders out there. They were just in it to make a quick buck and there wasn't a lot of regulation to stop these brokers from, from doing as such. But since then, um, it has been highly regulated and, and, and very highly scrutinized by the government to make sure that we are making sure that the seniors are taken very well care of. And um, since then, it's been, uh, it's been very underutilized because of the lack of education. I do find that sometimes um, wealth advisors and different people that might help individuals with their money don't know anything about it, or they might be going off of assumptions from the past. What's the best way for those professionals to get educated? Talk to an expert. Right, there are very, very few of us in the United States that specialize um, solely in reverse mortgages. So having a conversation with somebody like that is is crucial, especially if you're dealing with somebody's finances. But how can there not be that many experts out there? We see commercials all the time. Yeah, you know, um, anybody you know with a with a big marketing budget can you know blast out commercials, uh, and, and not to say that they aren't good companies. Um, but you always want to talk to somebody who specifically focuses on doing reverse mortgages in their local market, right? They're going to know the local nuances. They're going to know kind of the, what the market's doing and somebody that can sit down with you, your decision-making children, your financial advisor, your CPA, your um, estate planning attorney, and have that holistic conversation uh, multiple times or however many times um, you guys need to have that conversation. Well, and within any industry, there's people that have extreme specialties and this is what I know to be an extreme specialty. Absolutely. And so there's so many mortgage brokers out there. And if you go to a local mortgage broker, they may say, oh, sure, I can help you with reverse mortgages. Mm -hmm. um, and just be aware that they might be thinking they're going to refer you to someone within their company that's a few states away. And there you are right again into 1-800 number and right. that long distance thing. And really want to make sure that you've got somebody that they personally have the training and the certifications and the expertise and the passion for this and really wanting to put the senior first. Yeah, absolutely. We don't ask our financial advisors to be our tax, you know, tax consultants or uh, we don't ask them to be our trust attorneys. Um, so we should have somebody there as well to help manage their um, home equity position. Well, that's another 
area is uh, attorneys having a good understanding of it. Absolutely, yeah, and you know, it, it, it's just about having that conversation, right? I go into these, you know, to these meetings with these with these professionals, and um, a lot of times right out of the gate, they're like, you know what, I'm just gonna tell you right now, I am not a fan of reverse mortgages. But after having a couple minutes worth of conversations, there's been plenty of times where um, the, the financial advisor that we're chatting with says, hold on, let me stop the meeting. I'm gonna get my whole team in here because everything that we've ever known about reverses is, is totally wrong. Um, so let's have a conversation about it. Mm -hmm. and, um, that's very, very gratifying. And being able to educate and inform them about, hey, here's how we can utilize this program to ultimately increase your client's you know, financial position at the end of retirement, it allows them to maybe retire earlier. Maybe it allows them to enjoy that vacation that they've been wanting to do. Maybe it's the difference between, I'm gonna run out of money at age 75, or I'm gonna have money all the way until I die. Um, that, that can be very, very powerful. Reverse mortgages, just like any mortgage product, are not for everyone. It's not a one size fits all. Absolutely. So how do people go about getting information and having a good idea of whether it might be something for their family to consider. Yeah, there's, you know, it's, it's not for everybody. It's definitely not for everybody, but having a conversation with that expert, right? You wanna find somebody local in your area, um, whether it's in Kansas, whether it's, you know, in one of these other states, reach out to a local expert and having a conversation with them who's trusted, who is not just gonna try and sell them and put them into the loan just because it, you know, just because they can, uh, that's that's definitely the type of person you want to be reaching out to. And just looking at it from a holistic perspective, a good reverse mortgage professional is going to get a financial advisor um, included in the process to make sure that it not just only fits their current needs, but also their long-term financial needs. So how can a reverse mortgage um, make a difference for a senior? Like, what age is the, the number? The the minimum age for the home equity conversion mortgage, which is the FHA sponsored version of, of reverses, um, is 62. Um, there have been talks of that lowering down a little bit, but for now, at least it's 62. Um, there are some also, um, the, the conventional version uh, of reverses, which actually go down to age 55. Um, not in the state of Kansas, but in some of these other neighboring states, it is allowed to go down to age 55. And from there, they can start utilizing their home equity to, to benefit themselves in retirement. And whether that's just paying off their first mortgage and alleviating themselves from that monthly payment, or maybe it's, uh, hey, we wanna set up a, a monthly payment to ourselves, so we're getting a check every single month until the day that we move out of the house or we pass away, or maybe it's, hey, I have a house that's paid off, uh, but maybe let's look at leveraging a little bit of it to make sure that maybe my my investment funds aren't um, taking too hard of a hit in the market, and I still, you know, I still need my money to live. I still need my fifty, sixty thousand dollars to live, um, as opposed to taking my money out of the market. If the market has a bad year, then maybe I can take my funds out of my out of my home equity and, and leverage it at, you know, at a very, very low percentage, and allow my money to rebound in the market. And you know, that's that's a little bit more of a a high level approach to, to using reverses, but that's why I said, you know, hey, we always want to get a financial advisor involved because we don't expect every client to be extremely financially uh, uh, in tune with what they have going on, which is why we have these experts, right? So um, getting the financial advisor involved, that makes a lot of sense to them and they can see how to utilize this inside the program. In Kansas, someone that's age 62, they might qualify to do a home equity conversion mortgage. Absolutely. To utilize the equity in their current home or to purchase another property. Absolutely, yeah. It is a fantastic way to purchase a new home, right? You have clients, you know, especially with rising equity positions right now, you have clients with tons and tons of equity that, you know, oh, I'm just gonna buy the house in cash. I'm not gonna have a payment, it's gonna be great. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe there's a better use for that cash, right? Maybe they can earn a little bit more money in the market. You know, there's, you know, reasonable investment funds that can earn seven, eight, nine percent in the market. When the interest rates are at all time lows, you know, we're seeing stuff around 3%. Mm -hmm. You know, why wouldn't you leverage a little bit of your money and, and make a little bit more in the market, right? With the, with the reverse mortgage for purchase, um, you still have that no monthly mortgage payment. So you're saying rather than maybe park your cash into your house, maybe you can continue to earn money on Absolutely. your cash because if you're age qualified, then you might be able to do a reverse Absolutely. mortgage. Yeah, so for easy numbers, right, for the youngest age, so let's say you're buying a $500,000 house, as opposed to writing a $500,000 check, maybe you can write a $250,000 check, mm -hmm. and your reverse mortgage will make up the other $250,000, mm -hmm. and you could take that extra two hundred fifty dollars and invest it, or uh, maybe fix up the home, maybe it needs a little love, maybe, it, uh, maybe you want to go on that vacation, maybe you want to do whatever you, you know, you may want to do, but you don't have all that $500,000 tied up 
up into your home equity, which I'm sure you know, it's a lot harder to take equity out of your home than it is to, to put it into your home. So, mm -hmm. Well, I've had real estate clients use the equity in their home to live on on a reverse mortgage up until the point that they could no longer really stay in their home safely. And then they close out the reverse mortgage and move into a senior living community, retirement community. So that's one example uh, where they were actually living on that money. In fact, over and beyond the value of the home. And then they could leave the home and not owe any money. That's one of the benefits. Absolutely. It's a great way to leverage, you know, the, these things are, you know, as we mentioned earlier, you know, these things are very, very highly regulated. Mm -hmm. um, there are protections put in place for these seniors that will, will ensure that they don't owe more than what the value of their home is. Mm -hmm. So it allows them to, to, to sleep easy at night knowing, Hey, okay, my, my loan's starting to creep up and maybe the market goes down, right? Right now we're, we're all lucky. The home values are all, you know, going up and up and up. Uh, but maybe that's not the case in the future and maybe their equity position isn't as good as you know what we would like it to be today um, but they're protected in the future from ever owing more than what the house is worth so they can continue to leverage and use those funds mm -hmm. um, up until the day that they decide to move out or maybe it was their forever home and they um, were lucky enough to pass away in it. I just heard the other day that um, a oh, financial advisor someone told a family you don't want to do a reverse mortgage because it creates a liability for your children. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of different ways of, of thinking about it from there, right? And, and that's one one way of thinking about it. So um, in, in, in theory, does it really create a liability? Yes, in a way, right? On paper, yes, if you look at a total net worth statement, right, you now have a $100,000 loan against your house, right? But the thought process is, does that $100,000 liability that you took out is it going to earn more somewhere else, right? Is mm -hmm. the total net worth at the end of the scenario going to be higher? Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times, yes, right? With a with an increasing market, um, with low interest rates, and with increasing home equity, mm -hmm. um, typically that is going to increase um, net worth at the end of the scenario. That was a very high level explanation. Let's break it down a little bit. Yeah, is a hundred thousand dollar reverse mortgage balance mm -hmm. more of a liability than a hundred thousand dollar? mortgage of a different type? It is much less of a liability Okay. in, in practice. If you're putting it on paper, no, right? It's they're the, the same they're the same, thing. They're the same thing, exactly. The difference is on a reverse mortgage, if you're upside down, you can, um, you just yeah. sign the papers Yep. and that's it. You don't have to come up with the difference. Absolutely. Whereas on another mortgage. You will, you your will. heirs will. Mm -hmm. Unless you do a short sale. Unless you do a short sale, but then that causes all that's sorts of whole, other issues. Yeah, a yep. whole nother. That's a different that's episode. That's another episode. <laughs> <laughs> and this and this goes back to, you know, hey, let's get the financial advisors involved. Let's get the wealth advisors involved to make sure, hey, it doesn't make sense to put that hundred thousand dollar liability on our home mm -hmm. to put it somewhere else, mm -hmm. right? Maybe we use that hundred thousand to buy long-term care. And that's why, you know, it's extremely important to have that. You have the financial advisor, you have a mortgage professional, mm -hmm. you have a, a, an elder law attorney, a CPA, and, um, you know, maybe an insurance agent or, or somebody else, right? You have mm -hmm. people that are very involved and they all work together to make sure that you as the client get the absolute best um, look at every possible scenario to make sure that we're, everybody's moving in the right direction. Joining the conversation now is Tats Shepard. Tats, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having us here. Um, you know, this is such a near and dear subject to us. Um, it's a it's a tough. Um, we're kind of in this the the same spot. We're kind of in that sandwich generation where we're taking care of young ones and old older um, parents, aging parents, and we just have to be because um, we're faced with harder decisions. Mm -hmm. um, we want to make sure that we make mom and dad as comfortable as possible um, and, uh, and provide good options for them and um, just making sure that we can, you know, if they want to stay in their home, we can we can have them stay in their home, um, you know, if they, they need extra care. So those decisions are very, very tough for families to make. Mm -hmm. um, and we're here for them because we have options. Um, you know, that's that's just kind of something, and we get how tough it is for parents, and we get how tough it is for the uh, parents, um, parents of the parents. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say, uh, you know, older, but you know, we, we need more care, and we need more um, love, and we need more options. And that's why you want to have 
love good good advice, work with a trusted professional, um, both on the, uh, the the mortgage side to the uh, the insurance and financial side. Mm -hmm. um, it, those those decisions are there. They're not easy. They're not easy, mm -hmm. um, and we want to make sure that, although it's not us that's going through it, we we know as a professional we've seen, we've been there. We can provide and we can guide you, um, and so we can we can offer those options so that way mom and dad can. Um, be where they really want to be, that they're not um, stuck with just one option because with, you, you don't have the right advice and you don't, you're not working with a trusted professional. And so those are, um, what's important to you is really what's important to us. Tats, thanks so much for being on the show. And let's talk to Heidi, her partner. Yes. Meet Tats' partner, Heidi. Heidi, thank you so much for being on the show. It's my pleasure. What can you add to this conversation of people kind of weighing out uh, all their options before moving out of their home? Sure. You know, we talk to people with a lot of regularity that are going through this decision. Do I stay in my home? It's become big. It's become cumbersome. Or do I go ahead and move out and into an assisted living facility? Do I move into a patio home? What's the right choice for me? Mm -hmm. We can't make the decision for them, but we can help them. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of options. Um, and it doesn't really matter what they choose. Mm -hmm. We can tailor those options to them, whether that's through the through the mortgage or through the insurance. Mm -hmm. Well, it's, it's nice when professionals have kind of a clue of who's out there that they might be able to direct people to, rather than just focusing on the insurance that you're also very connected in the community and helping children of aging parents or seniors themselves uh, make those important connections. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's a tough decision and it's an emotional decision. I mean, to live in your home in some cases for 10, 15, 20, 50 years even. Some of the families that we work with have been in their home for, for decades mm -hmm. and then to make that decision to deal with the moving the the downsizing of their possessions, the downsizing of their physical structure, that can be a real challenge. Mm -hmm. And it's emotional, not just for the parents, but also for their children. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Heidi, for your perspective. We appreciate you being part of Empowering Seniors. Sure, my pleasure. What are some of the other parameters on reverse mortgages as far as the federal government's concerned? How are they protecting the consumer? So there are a bunch of different ways that the uh, the federal government ha is protecting seniors throughout this, right? One of the ways is before you can even start the loan process, mm -hmm. you have to have a third-party counselor um, interview. So you have to meet with this third-party counselor that is um, sponsored through the um, Housing uh, Administration. Um, it's an hour-long chat that you have with anybody except Except for your mortgage professional. So your mortgage professional cannot be included in it. Um, mm -hmm. So your financial advisor, your um, maybe decision-making children, uh, whoever you would like to have involved in that conversation, mm -hmm. they like to fill in the gaps that maybe that mortgage professional may have missed. Hey, maybe they missed talking about um, the way that the rate may change. Hey, maybe they stopped, you know, they didn't mention how uh, maybe when you pass away, what are the different options? Mm -hmm. So they try and fill in the gaps that the mortgage professional may have missed. Hopefully that professional didn't miss anything and it's mm -hmm. all just a review. Um, but that is their right to stop. You say, hey, okay, I talked to this, uh, to this counselor, and, and after having that chat, I feel much better about moving forward. Or, hey, maybe it it's, you know, brings up some questions that you want to have um, a conversation with your mortgage professional about. So uh, that's one way. There's also um, the, the, the mortgage insurance premiums that are they're included in that, right? It protects the client from ever owing more than what their house is worth. Um, it protects the client from um, ever, ever having to worry about being in that negative equity position or at least the, the, the ramifications of, of being in a negative equity position. You also have reduced the amount of funds that the client can take out at closing. So back in the day, right, let's say you were approved for a hundred thousand dollar line of credit on your hundred thousand dollar house right mm -hmm. they would just let you take out however much you wanted of that hundred thousand so it instantly puts you into a poor equity position that combined with not having the mortgage insurance there mm -hmm. right it turns into a really really bad scenario if if you know home values don't go up so now they've capped you so you can't take out more than 60 percent of whatever you um can take out mm -hmm. in the first year after year two they'll let you take out more um but they've also um 
they they strengthen the the guidelines around how you can take those funds out. So we don't put you know seniors in a in a poor position right out of the gate. Now, you know if they don't you know take the advice of their of their wealth advisor, or their mortgage professional, right? We mm -hmm. can't we can't stop that. Um, so there's always going to be those uh, those those negative cases. But if you have those people around you, hopefully we can we can avoid those as best we can. It's in nobody's best interest to owe more than what the house is worth. Mm -hmm. Nobody. It's not the mortgage company's best interest. It's not the client's best interest. It's not anybody's best interest. Mm -hmm. So they do a really good job of structuring these loans in a way that that's going to be very unlikely, right? We would have to have um, a client taking out a lot of money, and we'd have to have a client whose maybe home value drops significantly over the life of the loan, maybe you know 20 years into the loan. So um, that's very unlikely, but the protections are there just in case to make sure that, you know, hey, we're in a good position. And, and when the client passes away or moves out permanently, then uh, the same three options exist that there would be in a normal mortgage situation, right? You can sell the house, uh, pay off the loan and keep the proceeds. Mm -hmm. um, your, your kids inherit the house they can buy the house back from you know from the bank per se or from the estate, pay off that loan and, and keep whatever proceeds and divvy that up, mm -hmm. um, or they can just deed it to the bank and say, hey, I just don't even want to deal with it. I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and you said buy it back from the bank. The bank doesn't own the house. The bank does not you own the house. You mean just pay the yep. mortgage pay off. Pay the mortgage so just, off. Either just paying the mortgage off, doing a refinance. Um, Absolutely. Or the estate's paying it off. Yep. But you're work you're working it through the estate. Absolutely. Um, that the bank at no time owns the home unless nope. at some point somebody signs off and says, okay. Yes, and that would be there's after. There's no equity. Yes, at, that would be so after, that'd be a after, rare the, case. after the seniors passed away, right? Mm -hmm. um, or if, you know, there are still foreclosures in this space, right? It's a mortgage that you can't get foreclosed upon, but that would be only if you aren't making your property tax and your insurance payments, if you're not keeping the house up to um, up to FHA standards, mm -hmm. right? Or... Um, and we're really being real with like worst case scenarios. Absolutely. Um, the fact is that you just have to pay your interest. No, I'm sorry. Property taxes and insurance. Property taxes and insurance. Yeah. And make okay. sure your house doesn't turn into a dump, right? Okay. Essentially and what we mean want. like a real dump. A real dump. Like we're <laughs> talking like hoarders sort of situation here. But where there's real, uh, a real distressed property situation. Absolutely. It's not like people are watching to see how perfect you're keeping the siding up or the paint up. We're talking about exactly. extreme extreme cases. Right. Like it fact, looks like somebody hasn't lived in the property for years. Have you even come across something no. like that? Mm -hmm. No, I mean, it's, just, extre it's extremely uncommon. And, and like we mentioned earlier, it's in nobody's best interest for this to happen. So mm -hmm. the mortgage company uh, is usually going to reach out and say, Hey, we've noticed you haven't paid your property taxes. Can we help? Can we help set up a payment plan? Can we do something to, to get this taken care of for you? Because at the end of the day, we all want to make sure that we're putting the seniors in the best possible position mm -hmm. from a long, uh, from a long-term financial standpoint and a short-term financial, financial standpoint. So, um, whatever we can do to all work on the same team is, is what we want. All right. So we talked about like way worst case scenarios, mm -hmm. just being real there. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about what some of the savvy benefits are. Yeah. Let's say your home is the home that you've raised your children in and you have to go up and down the stairs or it's just not the right floor plan any longer. Right. Because usually the home you raised your kids in is not the best home to age in. Mm -hmm. And so if you want to age in place, maybe it's not that particular house, but a different home that you own. Absolutely. And... Um, so you can go out and see what else might suit us better today. And you can, because you're 62 or older, you can possibly utilize a home equity conversion mortgage. So how does that benefit a borrower? They so put down how much? Yeah. Range. So, you know, at the very youngest, right, you're looking at usually somewhere between 45 and 50% as a mm -hmm. down payment. So you're still putting down a lot of cash. You're, you're putting down a lot, a lot of, cash. of cash. You got a lot of skin in the game, mm -hmm. right? At the oldest, right, you could put down as little as 25%. Okay. So uh, these these go on kind of a sliding scale. So the older the client, the less they have to put down mm -hmm. because it's based off of life expectancy. Mm -hmm. Um so it allows them to utilize their home equity that they've worked really, really hard to build in their current home mm -hmm. um, a little bit smarter, okay. right? There's going to be no principal and interest payments, right? So there are no principal and interest payments required on that home. So mm -hmm. maybe you, you know, you're comparing maybe a normal mortgage to a reverse mortgage, right? You're going to look at saying, hey, does that make sense in my payments? So someone might have a very small fixed income, mm -hmm. say 1100 a month. Mm -hmm. They're looking at something that might cost them 500 a month payment mm -hmm. and they can make that $500 a month amount go away. Absolutely. And 
keep their eleven hundred dollars to really yeah, live on. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. And, and like I mentioned, they can still make the payment if they really want to. They're just not required. Well, in some, uh, like in Wichita, has an example. There's patio homes where it's low maintenance mm -hmm. lifestyle, and that could be very suitable for people. But there's limited inventory. The market's really tight, so they might be looking at spending more to get the lifestyle they want. Absolutely. And a reverse mortgage can close the gap on that. Absolutely, because you can you can essentially double. Right, your buying power. If mm -hmm. you have a if you have a free and clear two hundred fifty thousand dollar home, your options are to buy a two hundred fifty thousand dollar home in cash, assuming you don't want a monthly payment. Mm -hmm. Right, two hundred fifty thousand dollars in cash, or you can buy a five hundred thousand dollar home with a reverse mortgage. So it increases your buying power like crazy, and that's even at the low end of things. And and, and these patio homes aren't the cheapest thing in the world, mm -hmm. um, especially if you want that lifestyle. You you, you know that you know, that's, mm -hmm. if that's the lifestyle you want to live, mm -hmm. which is great because then you don't have to have the maintenance and all that, and you can still well, get the same end goal. Age in place, you can have in-home care later on. Absolutely. You can have home health later on, and have enough space so you can have your medical team or your caregivers come in mm -hmm. and be able to move around and work if you're in the right floor plan. So just one of the options out of all the, the myriad of choices there are. So we're not necessarily trying to sell people on the idea of reverse mortgage, but just educate the market a little bit. And that might be something to be curious about. At least explore it as an option. Mm -hmm. right. And there's a lot of commercials on TV, national commercials mm -hmm. um, with hunks from the 80s oh, pitching yeah. it. <laughs> and... Um, and so I think it's good that they're getting that message out. Absolutely. That just like any important service, that anytime you can utilize a local professional that you can meet with face to face, your family can meet with face to face, your Absolutely. attorney can meet with face to face. Um, that might be a good idea. You might, yeah. You always want to be able to put a face to the name, and um, you know, I, I can't speak to other, you know, other professionals, but um, I, at least with my team, uh, we meet with the. Um, the seniors and typically the decision-making children and the financial advisors three to four times before um, actually pulling the trigger and moving forward. So you want to be able to have that conversation multiple times because mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a little bit of a foreign concept, right? Is this something that you would recommend for your own mother or grandmother? Yes, it's already in her financial plan. <laughs> okay, well, Justin, thank you so much for being on the show and for helping shed a little light on this complex topic. My pleasure. And thank you for watching. If you have any question about this topic or anything else that we cover on the show, please reach out to us at empoweringseniors at kpts.org or you can call 316-686-4500. Until next time, I'm Katherine Ambrose. Thanks for watching. This program is made possible by American Senior Benefits Wichita is all about your peace of mind. We specialize in asset protecting, safeguarding your health, planning your estate, and preserving your freedom of choice. We're here to work through all of this with you. American Senior Benefits Wichita proudly supports PBS Kansas. The Candle Club, a place where friends, food, and music come together. Currently, we offer live entertainment every night except Sundays. Enjoy our delicious specialty appetizers and the Candle Club Signature Prime Rib. More about upcoming events at CandleClubWichita.com. Home Health and Hospice of Kansas is a locally owned and community-based provider. We offer quality health care to our patients and families complete with love, warmth, and compassion. We'll take care of all of the details for you. More information at KansasHomeHealth.com. Welcome to Cedric Plaza Retirement Community. Our living options are designed to suit your specific needs and activities that you're sure to love. We believe you'll be able to see yourself here enjoying time with friends and family. For more information, cedricplaza.org.